What's going on guys, it's Bronlight Empire Barbell and I am very excited to announce the release of my first book, Base Strength Program Design Blueprint. I started writing this thing at the beginning of the COVID shutdown. I figured I would put all of the free time I have to use and I probably wrote and rewrote it about three times because I wasn't going to put it out and charge for it unless it met the standards that I had set for myself. So I put a lot of time into it and I think it came out pretty good. I'm going to go through a quick breakdown and then talk about some of the principles that are in the book so you get an idea of what we're trying to do here. I'm trying to build kind of a groundwork philosophy for training that borrows from all of the systems that are currently available and just implements them in a more comprehensive, kind of easy to understand way. So I want to make it so it's easy down the road to make decisions, to pivot your training, to implement different strategies to solve problems. So we're not just winging it, we're not just program hopping. So a quick breakdown of the book, it's 132 pages. Now that's pretty dense. It's not like I took the last 25 pages and just put in printable training logs for you to track your numbers with. This is pretty heavy on text. There aren't a lot of pictures. I put in a few visuals that I think are really helpful, but it's pretty dense with information. There are dozens of waves. Those are my wave progressions. Those are the kind of cookie cutter, easy to fill in. You know, if you do this on week one, this is what you do week two, week three, and then repeat. And I have a lot of those. There's a lot of different flavors. Some use RPE, some are percentage based. So there's a lot of different ways to implement them and they can be selected based off what is intuitive and what you're comfortable with. The reason I give a lot of variety, it's not just to fill up a book with content. It's really to give you an idea of all the different ways you can do things so that you have tools to make better decisions with. That's really what it comes down to. Even the templates in the back, I give pretty strict instruction that there's no bonus points for running through all of them. It's not a bucket list of templates that you're gonna do the first one, then the second one, then the third one. They are all self-contained. They're all examples of how you implement these training decisions. And they all give pretty clear instruction on how you would work within that template for a pretty long period of time. They're all arranged based on different frequencies, different splits, different amounts of accessory. Some of them have a lot of isolation movements. Some of them lean more on movement variations. And they all work in different er uh, arenas of specificity. All of them feature different progressions. So I implement the waves differently with each one. So I show you that how you can arrange them, how you can train multiple days per week, how you can train a lift you know, once per week, and all of the different ways you can mess with those variables to get the desired result. Part of it is setting a baseline, finding what's sustainable for you right now. And the other component is figuring out what to move to down the road. So we cover that pretty intensively. There is a strongman programming bonus at the end. I was on a heater writing out all these training programs and I figured why stop there? There isn't a lot out there as far as how to tackle strongman events. And it goes actually pretty nicely with general uh, training, GPP training. So if you're doing stuff with sleds or you're doing carries, you're doing things to kind of round yourself out, there's some really good progressions in there and some advice on how to work those in. So that is a nice little bonus for you guys. I'll probably do another piece that's more in depth specifically with strongman events as that's getting popular, there needs to be a lot more training information on that because it's pretty lacking right now. A lot of guys just go into their strongman event days and it's just practice and go as hard as you can. And as we've all learned the hard way, that is not sustainable. So the paperback and the Amazon Kindle version are getting formatted right now. Guys, like generally I'm a one man show and that's not me bragging. That's me telling you I don't like to work with others. I'm very, uh, I'm a perfectionist. I get really obsessive over certain things like graphic design, like I made the cover, uh, you know, I wrote out the book, all these videos I make and edit myself. I do not typically work with other people. That's something I'm trying to get over as I scale. So I actually had to outsource that to somebody on Fiverr because I have no idea how to do that and did not want to take the week to find out. So those are getting formatted paperback and for the Amazon Kindle store mid January, I should have a, a test back, an actual concrete book, so I can make sure it came out right, that there's no errors or, or anything like that. And mid-January, so the paperback and Amazon Kindle version, there'll be a few dollars more, but that's really gonna be just to deal with uh, fees that are associated with printing, shipping, uh, Amazon takes a big cut, so all of that factors into it. So there's an incentive, it works out for me a little bit better if you guys go through the PDF, but I want all of these options to be available for you. So to get into what the book's about, the overarching theme is training decisions long term how do you conceptualize your training over a long period of time so that you can keep progress going so the book starts out with the basic principles for growth we get into that a lot of it is stuff you're already familiar with but i try to explain it in ways that are conceptually easy to carry forward into the more complex stuff and then we discuss this is the important one why progress stops so a lot of the book is about causes of stagnation why we reach plateaus what most people do incorrectly when they're winging it or when they're training on their own and specifically how we can modify our training to sidestep that stagnation. 
At that point, we're basically getting into the nuts and bolts of periodization. So there's some comparisons between different types of periodization, how they attack things like recovery, how they address specificity. I incorporate what I call the SRN model. Everybody knows that variation is needed in training, but that variation has to have focus. The variation you implement has to address specificity, recovery, and novelty. But it's just a way to check those boxes when you're making a shift in your training. Okay, am I changing the right things or am I just arbitrarily doing something different? So to get an idea on this base model that we're going with, I call it base strength. The idea is that wide bases make tall peaks or wide bases make tall ceilings. You might've heard that. So the idea is how developed, how proficient you are with something like strength is gonna be dependent on how wide your base is. Your base consists of all the non-specific qualities that you have in relation to that peak. So if we're talking about strength, well, how strong you're going to be is going to be dependent on, let's say, how skillful you are in the movement. Coordination is a big one. How much muscle mass you have. More mass is gonna move more weight. How much endurance you have. You need a basic amount of capacity to get through the workouts in order to grow. Many of you might have found that if you've ever taken on like a high volume routine or a routine that has EMOMs or timed rest intervals, that as your capacity grew, you could do more work and that more work led to more strength. So all of these are not necessarily specific. Training these specifically by themselves aren't necessarily going to jettison your strength to world-class heights, but getting all of those things rounded out is going to increase your potential to be strong down the road. So to that end, we segment our training into two basic broad ideas, time spent building your base and time spent chasing your peak. So I call them base phases and peak phases. Uh, my last video, I got into this a little bit. So basically in this very oversimplified model, I want you to imagine four stages of growth. Imagine a novice who has a pretty narrow base, pretty low peak, and their position, their baseline is actually really far away from their peak. Now that's one of the reasons that novices can train hard indefinitely and still recover. How close you are to your theoretical peak is going to determine how much stress your body incurs with every hard effort. The more peaked out you are, the more redlined you are, the more recovery is going to be needed for each effort. So novices are really far away from that hypothetical peak, so they can do a lot more work as they train. Then they go into early intermediate status where they get closer to that peak. But at that point, if they're on starting strength, they've only been doing fives, or if they're on a lot of other programs, if they're winging it, they're probably just maxing out every workout. So you become very specialized to the way you train, and then you bump against that peak, and then you stagnate, you don't know what to do. As you move past that into mid intermediate and beyond, that usually comes with making some change that led to that magical growth. And you can't really put your finger on what it was. You just know you did something different and you grew out of nowhere. And that represents a shift in your base widening. So now your theoretical peak automatically goes up. The second you start to widen out those qualities, your capacity, your potential for your peak goes up and that ends up further away from where you are, which is like rediscovering newbie gains. That's kind of how I conceptualize that. And then once you start chasing that peak again, once again, you get more specialized. So by the time you're up here, now you're competitive. Now, not only do you have some muscle behind you and some skill, but you're also neurologically dialed in. You're more specific to strength. So that's somebody who's really starting to find themselves as a, let's say a good power lifter at that point. So we wanna be able to move back and forth between those phases. We want to quantify this so it's easy to make decisions without having to really doubt what those decisions are. We know that we're doing the right thing when it's warranted. Now this is very simplified as a tetrahedron. There's a lot more things that can go into your base. These are just a few obvious ones. You can turn this on its head. So if you are, let's say, shifting into bodybuilding and mass is your primary goal, how muscular you are is going to be determined on these base characteristics. So if you're let's say somebody who's been bodybuilding and only bodybuilding for years, and you never actually took time to do something strength specific, you might find that increasing your strength over the course of a few months might increase your ability to handle load on your regular uh, volume workout. You can put any uh, quality into this model. It doesn't even have to be a physical quality. I could break down organizational habits. You could break down you know, how you multitask at work. There's a lot of things that go into this, but this is an easy way just to conceptualize how those skills play into each other. So if we're starting out by building our base, we are just working foundational stuff. For, for most of you guys, that's volume work. That's the obvious thing. This is going to start to mirror periodization. And what does periodization typically organize itself into? It differentiates between strength specific work and something like volume or hypertrophy specific work. And some periodization methods do them concurrently, some spread them apart in different patterns. The only thing that seems to matter is that you have some time dedicated to one or the other to round yourself out. So in a base phase, I'm chasing volume. That's the easy thing. 
In the book, I operate off three-week waves just because it's easy. There's a lot of different splits you could potentially do, but again, there's not a bonus for doing them all. I like three-week waves because it's an easy way to ebb and flow back and forth so you have a sustainable amount of work that has just the right amount of recovery, and I find this very easy to work around. So we're gonna start, if we're in a base phase, what qualities increase your base? So I start by talking about those types of things, those types of progressions, all of the things you can expect in those types of phases, the success I've had with them. And then you might repeat that several weeks in a row. So an entire phase, if we're to label this a base phase, it might last nine weeks, it might last 12, it might last five months. If you find that it keeps working so well, you have no real reason to switch. So over your base phase, let's say you're doing volumizing. You just focus on adapting yourself to volume. That's a really tried and proven way. I've had a lot of success with it and it looks something like that. And then of course we go into more detail with it and you progress that way, adding weight very carefully and slowly. So your body has plenty of time to adapt, building up to a crescendo of a very hard week and then dropping back on the next wave, running back up. So that allows a certain amount of recovery. And you might have very non-specific qualities. You might focus more on these base qualities, doing more things for capacity, more things for skill, to get general coordination up, you know, unilateral work, work on your balance, work on, you know, bodybuilders have their mind muscle connection, those types of things. And you're trying to build mass, which is where the volume comes in. So you're checking all these boxes. By the time you run through so many waves, you should see some very tangible progress and you should be ready, you should be primed for some new stimulus because all of this work, all of this capacity, all of these movements, you're starting to get very specialized, so now it's time to shift back. So that's where we move back into a peak phase where a peak, we're gonna focus specifically on the thing that we're concerned with. So that's strength specificity. How do we program strength specificity? Volume drops, right? So now we're allowing recovery. Our efforts are more difficult, more intense. So we're getting a lot more mileage out of singular hard efforts instead of a lot of sub-maximal efforts. And the exercises we pick are going to be more oriented towards strength development, meaning more overload movements, things that stimulate your nervous system, maybe more surgical approaches to attacking weaknesses. It's less generalized. So just by having those things in our mind, we can easily move back. We can keep the split the same. We can keep a lot of the exercises the same, and we can just make key changes to how much work we're doing and what the wave progressions are. So keeping that in mind is very easy to make decisions uh, in a way that's logical. So we can keep progress rolling forward. So in a peak phase, instead of volumizing, we intensify. We'll be probably dropping sets each time. So we're going to lower the rep range. The percentage is going to jump each week. We'll get a little heavier. And again, this is very broad and cookie cutter. There's a lot of more specific recommendations we make. And as the, the peak goes on, reps are gonna drop. Eventually I'll end up in triples, doubles, and singles. And before you know it, you're up to hitting, you know, a one rep max at something, and that's the very top of your peak. That's your test. And that is the culmination of everything you've done. That's the culmination of all of the base work you've done, the entire peak you did. And this, it doesn't necessarily have to work up to one, a one rep max. It's just spending time working that peak, chasing up to that ceiling, becoming specialized right before you drop back and you repeat the cycle. So this is a long-term ebb and flow. And that's the important thing and that's what the book addresses. So we cover the waves, we cover what the actual progressions are. I give you a ton of them and we cover in depth how to move back and forth. So there's a lot to chew on. So hopefully by the time I get the next one out, you guys have had time to let this information simmer. You really want these principles ingrained into your psyche so you can make those decisions down the road as we start to get more specialized. The next book I already have laid out, it's going to be called Peak Strength, and it's going to be entirely about chasing that peak, what real specialization looks like once you've gone through the, the rigmarole of setting a substantial base that can support a high peak in the first place. It's going to cover contest prep. It's going to get more into specificity, the things you need when you are dialed in. So we're going to get a series going. There's going to be a lot of in-depth discussion of all of these different facets of programming. And I'm hoping to kind of build just a conceptual universe where all of these pieces fit together. So I'm not just left throwing information at you and leaving you guys to figure out how it fits and in what situation. So that's all I got for today. I'm super excited for everybody to get their hands on this and give me feedback. That's really the one thing I'm, I'm interested in. I wanna put out a lot more of these books but they're only valuable if they answer questions, if they 
have solutions. So for that, I really look forward to everybody's feedback. Leave it in the comments, leave it in the forum, empire-forum.com. You can leave it on my Facebook page. If you see this ad pop up anywhere, don't hesitate to leave a review and be brutally honest. I mean, don't pull punches. If there's things you think need to be tightened up, things that didn't get addressed, put them in there and I'll make sure to get to it in the future. Again, I appreciate everybody's support. Everybody's word of mouth, you've all been awesome. So thanks again. It's been really humbling to go through this journey with you guys. So we've got a lot more to come, but until next time, this is Bromley from Empire Barbell. I'll see you.